Hello, everybody, and a very happy Monday, September 20th to you. For this episode of United Sessions, Dave, I think the subcontext is, Lucas, don't be an irredeemable fanboy. Try and get something of value out of this, uh, and don't just sit here and talk about how much you love Mike Herman Trout. Um, we have an incredible guest. He's already Talk about how much you love Mike Herman Trout. <laughs> That's a great idea. Let's spend the whole time talking about me. <laughs> Our well, guest joining tonight. us. Go ahead, Lucas. Yeah, it's Jonathan Banks. And if you had told me, you know, 10 years ago that I would get to talk to Mike as a part of my job, like this is actually something I get to do. Uh, he's already shared some bits of wisdom with us offline, but I'll, I'll share my own bit of wisdom. Like kids, incredible things can happen if you just keep trucking along and, and pretending like you're, you're, you know what you're doing and that you deserve any sort of excellence. Um, yes, Jonathan Banks, Mike Garman Trout. Uh, legendary character in Better Call Saul, uh, Breaking Bad, a, a, a crazy illustrious career before that, which which we're definitely going to delve into uh, tonight. But first and foremost, Mr. Banks, how are you? I'm swell. Just great. Old, angry, bitter, little revengeful, but thank you, I'm fine. <laughs> I share I share most of those adjectives. You're breaking up. Dave, up I think you can again. <laughs> So this is an incredible, incredible opportunity to kind of talk with you. And, and something magical happened this year. And I think it's almost a, a correction, of course, after uh, what we went through in 2020 with with the COVID restrictions. Uh, we didn't get a single home game. And after the magic we saw in 2019, that was all the more devastating. But but 2021 has has come back with a, be, a bit of a vengeance. And one of the, the fixtures that we see at the sidelines of these games is, is you, Mr. Banks. You have been awesome i think you've been out to i think every game except one of them maybe um and i i just want to ask you first and foremost like what what keeps you coming back i i know the first one can can kind of get you intoxicated well, I mean, first, you know what you're breaking up on me a little bit i got the first what keeps me coming back you know i, I love being there and i i love the team what a great team and you know it's funny because my favorite though or the people in the curse. And I want to go out there and say hello to everybody in the curse because you've got to be, you you are great fans. And it's fun, it's just fun to go over there. No, come on. What's not to like? You're playing in one of the most family friendly stadiums that I've ever been in. And you have a crowd. I'm not, I haven't seen it. I've never been there when I, I, I didn't really pay much attention to this, but it seems to me that everybody is having a great time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a blast. And I think having, having folks like yourself is, is a big part of that, right? It's, it's people, I mean, you didn't, you didn't like me, unlike Lucas, we didn't grow up in New Mexico. Right. And so you came here, you adopted the state, you've made it your home. And, and I think that's a big part of, you know, bringing people together is, is kind of having people from all over the place. Kind of a similar question what Lucas said, but what attracted you to New Mexico in the first place? Obviously, you came here to shoot some movies, I mean, shoot some TV, rather, And, and but what kept you here? What made you love New Mexico? Well, first of all, they pay me, and, <laughs> and, and then, they, then they put me under um, a, a servitude contract that goes on for years. But, no, I mean, come on. I love both, you know, Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul has been – without a question, the highlight of my career. I mean, you could be, I could be coy about it, but I'm not. These last, these last 10 years have just been great. And I've been, you know, it's one of those fortunate things that you work with people that you like. And then, you know, cause trust me, I mean, you can work a long time with people and it gets a little thin. Um, that's not been the case. It, and I have a crew. I did, I did a favor for my brother today who runs a watershed district in Colorado. And Billy asked me, he said, will you do a public service? And I did. But I had to call in some favors uh, to get the crew to shoot it. And they were right there. I, w I walked in there this morning and took a look at, at men and women that I've been working with for 11 years, 10 years. And... I mean, it's touch, it touched me. It really did. And we put something nice down for them. Because, you know, those watershed districts for all of us are pretty damn important. 
um, yeah. if we want to stay alive. Which I think is the ultimate goal of the human existence is staying yeah. alive. Des despite all the, the bells and whistles you put around it, staying alive is the, is the biggest part. Yeah. I, I, I wanna I wanna get the perspective because Dave and is I've from stayed alive a while, I might add. I I've <laughs> stayed alive a while. <laughs> You're crushing the living game, Mr. Banks. And You've done it your uh, whole I don't life. think anyone can take that away from you. I'm telling you. You set your own personal record. Guys, I'm telling you. When because you know, you see the character, you see Mike out there, you, most of the time you see him, it is at night. And trust me, it is at night. This Thursday, I'll work till two or three in the morning. Oof. Friday, I may see the sun come up. I hope not. And and maybe we'll get lucky and I'll be out by one or two. Who knows? Oof, man. What a grind. So, go ahead, go ahead Dave. No, no, no. So as far, you, you've been here, I, I mean, between shooting Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, you've been here, I mean, got to be getting close to a decade, I would imagine. It's over a decade. Yeah, and so what about New Mexico have you loved? I mean, I, the thing that always kept, that kept me here when I, I was love, here was the people. Yeah, you broke up on me, but I can tell you this. I mean, New Mexico, when I first came here, it's interesting. And I'm, I'm going to be candid with you. You come, They put us in those hotels up around Lomas in Louisiana, right? That was when I first got here. And you go over to Lomas at that point, and you see a lot of tire stores and – a, a guy out on the side tr spinning a sign and stuff like that. And I looked at it and I went, oh, my God. Because Lomas is not the perfect boulevard to introduce you to, okay? What happens after a period of time that you begin to see the beauty, you get out, you get around, you know, all of a sudden. And I unfailingly, and it is a sweeping generalization, I know. But you land at that airport, which may be the best airport in the world to go in and out of. And there is a consideration. There's a, there's a, there are good manners. There are people, uh, effortless good manners of people welcoming you and smiling and saying good morning. And you know what, guys? I've, I've lived in a lot of, I grew up in D.C., I've lived in New York City, I've lived in L.A. a long time. It's just the big cities are the hustle. I don't have to tell you. I, you know where I'm going with this. This is a lovely place to live. And, uh, I mean, that's what's come over me. I didn't think that when I first got here. But I certainly think it now. And now that the show is coming to an end, I'm... Uh, it, it tears at me because I don't want to leave. You don't have, have to have leave. To. I will hire you tomorrow to work for <laughs> New Mexico United. You tell me what you want your job to be, and we will establish it. What do you want I'd, to do I'd like for to New serve Mexico beer. United, Mr. Banks? <laughs> and, and as long as I get to taste it all the time, I'd like to serve beer. And I'll, <laughs> and I'll, be, and I'll be really friendly. Hey, how are you? Have a beer. You know? Number one beer hawker. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> what do you got? Beer here, beer here. Number one beer hawker in the brand new stadium, Mr. Jonathan Banks is hired. We've got our first hire. Boom, yeah. nailed and it. I to say, I mean, let's talk about the new stadium because, you know, if I'm hearing correctly, it is not going to cost people taxes, and I think it's important that they know that. Yeah, I completely it's agree. It's really important. And so what's not to like about a new stadium if you don't have to pay nothing? That's right. It's not going to cost anybody a dime. Nobody's taxes are going to go up by a penny. You're 100% right. Yeah. And, you know, I think people are so cynical um, at this point that there are a bunch of people that are out there going, oh, that's impossible BS. But that's not what I'm hearing. Just enjoy your new stadium and vote for it, for God's sakes. That's right. That's right. November 2nd. <laughs> Do we need I to update the, the artwork? Dave, I know we, we saw some initial artwork on, on the stadium signs and everything, but do we need to update it to just enjoy your stadium, for God's sakes? Quote Jonathan Banks. Yep, that's it. <laughs> but, and, Jonathan. He'll you, and, and he'll give you a beer. <laughs> that's right, yeah. That's if you right. vote for the stadium, Jonathan Banks well, will I'm be gonna, I'm going to speak for Pete. 
But the first night in the new stadium, you get one beer with a coupon. I like it. I like that idea a lot. Marketing team. That's that's where you're at. We have a lot of people asking, where are we going to place you? How are we going to hire you? We're, we're just going to put you in a general marketing consultancy role. Um, Jules, who is a, a, a dear friend of yours, and, and you're sort of connected to the whole thing. She says, you come and work at the office. There's no way someone else gets to sit next to you. She calls the desk next to you. Break, to break it up on me. Say it again. Ju Juliana, our mul multiple friend, has already called dibs with you. If you look at the comment down on the bottom of the screen, there's no way she's going to let anyone else sit next to you. <laughs> uh, Tony, you know, Tony, Tony, go ahead. I tell you, it just, we, it, 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 we talk. We talk about so many fans, and the fans need to know this. I'm a dinosaur. I know no more how to work a computer and do whatever. I mean, I can open my email pretty much. You know, I learned to copy and paste recently. <laughs> hey, hey, but the. We, we took this thing tonight and trying to get on took me a half an hour to get on. And then I realized it wasn't my ineptitude. It was my iPad that just wasn't going to do it. So Juliana had to bring over the, her computer and I had to ply her with a beer and give her these <laughs> and stuff. And, and she helped me get on. I'm very, very pleased. She is the, uh, she's the MVP. I think of the episode. Fair to say. Uh, Lu Lucinda uh, in our chat here says, I think Mr. Banks needs to do a commercial promoting yes for the stadium. And then Tony Aguirre takes it one step further. Jonathan Banks for mayor. There, I said it. God bless you, child. God bless you. <laughs> um, now, guys, I got to ask you, and, 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 and no disrespect, but the mayor's job, is a job that is really, really hard. Yeah. Everywhere. I don't want to do anything that's really, really hard. I don't <laughs> have to stay up all night. I don't want any more hard work. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think I think you've earned that. I think you've definitely earned that several times over. But you know what? If we're going to be really, uh, yeah, now I'm not going to be a smart ass. I'm going to say this. If I can lend myself to anything that is helping young people in this town and kids, because there are a lot of people that don't have much. Um, I want to be part of that. And if being part of the government would be part of that, then I would be all in for it. You heard it here, folks. Jonathan Banks is running for mayor. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for Albuquerque. No. God love Albuquerque. You know, it's just the kids. Uh, I don't want to be soggy and sentimental, but I, I had a, a wonderful mother who raised me by herself. And uh, we didn't have a, a whole lot when I was young. And people, people need, young kids need, need help. And they, and they obviously, they just need help. Well, and, I'll, I'll, and then when you get to that, it doesn't matter the economic class. All, all, all young kids need a need a lift, need support. I don't I don't think there's a single person in the world who has not benefited from hope. I, I have not counted any individual who had hope in their life and they're like, man, if only I, I hadn't had that hope. And uh, Dave and I are both big Ted Lasso dorks. And there's there's that big belief in that show. Great episode about it's the hope that kills you, but it's not. It's, it's the hope that keeps you going. It's, it's the hope and the aspiration. And we've already seen so many reciprocals of this, man, whether it's what you guys did for student filmmakers and student writers who I remember I was an advisor at UNM and you guys were shooting uh, the last season of Breaking Bad. And I had a couple of aspiring like filmmakers that were like, what do I do? And I was like, just go out there, man, and just say, like, what can I do? I'll, I'll hold a microphone. I'll, I'll do anything you tell me to do. And they went out there and, like, waited for Vince to come out. And Vince was so classy and gave him so much insight. And, I, I, I mean, that residual on top of what having the academy team means now. And we have this 17-year-old kid who's come up through New Mexico and is now signed to a professional contract. Like, we are in the business of hope generation, and I don't think that there's a better business you could possibly be in. No, and I, 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 I so 
love that. You know, I, I think a great example is Australia back in 70, 71, and about that time. They started to give at the university, they started to give kids film, cameras, go out and make something. And out of that came Breaker Morant and, oh, what was the other one? Uh, anyway, great films. Um, oh, I'm going to, I'm blanking on the film that I love, but it does. Dylan, hit us in the private chat. Dylan, our producer, is a film dork. He probably knows exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, the Gallipoli. The Gallipoli. I mean, it just those were, those were filmmakers that just started. And I truly believe that you can make films anywhere, anywhere. And now this industry has come here. But I'm telling you, for those people that I had a teacher at one time that told me that I thought the world of uh, Gordon Hunt that said just adamantly at me all the time, do your own stuff, write your own stuff, make your own stuff. Don't depend on getting a PA's job on one of these TV shows where they work you like a dog. And if you're lucky, you get paid attention to. I'm not saying it's a bad way to go. But I, I think you need to be creative. You need to do your own stuff and have confidence in it. And don't think, oh, I don't know, I don't know. You know what? I, it, when I, I teach acting classes every once in a while at Indiana University, and I've taught in professional studies at UCLA, and... I always say to young actors, the one thing, you know, it's not about your headshot or the next this or whatever. How do I get an agent? You've got to, you must act. You keep acting, 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 acting. And don't mess around, you know, with, and don't mess around with a teacher that's going to put you down, ever. There is no reason for any artist not to be lifted if you're doing the work. Well, it, it sounds a lot like being an athlete, right? It's that repetition. It's it's that practice, that training that allows you to continue to be at your best, right? Like these soccer players, very much like an actor. And you know, I, I went through your your IMDb before we before we got on here. And obviously, there's the roles that that I know of, but I mean, there you have so many credits to your name. How crucial was it in your mind to continue to have all these all these roles all the time? You know, you're keeping yourself busy and and making sure that you stay at, at the top of your game. I knew, uh, you know. I, I, I had I had a great I studied with Gordon Hunt for years and I studied with him for 17 years and that that I remember and Gordon's passed away now but my acting class always gave me a place to go do good Shaw good Shakespeare or bad Shakespeare bad Shaw it gave me a place to to fall on my face and but it always kept me active and i mean there wasn't unless i unless i became lazy there wasn't a week that went by that i wasn't putting up a monologue or a scene why you know and then and gordon always used to say auditions were just another chance to act if and and he also always said and i would say this and then would get off the acting thing but i he said this to young actors, when you're going out and you're putting on that audition, you're doing the audition, that always make sure you treat yourself in some way afterwards. That you take yourself, whatever, to a contemplative place, to the park, or you go to a movie, or you get yourself a milkshake. But you do something for yourself. And never, ever, 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 you know, you want to listen. I got some years on me. I'm 74 years old, and I'm a still a badass. And I, but I'm telling you, I want to be a better actor. I want to be a better actor when I'm 75 and I'm 76. I want to be better every year. I want to be better. The only thing you know about a better call Saul ending, you know then, you know, I would like to go play something that is, to, you know, 
totally against type. Let me go play a fop in a, in a Moliere farce or whatever it may be. Yeah. That's awesome and inspiring. Uh, I, I love that. You know, it's, it's, I, it's just a, it's a conversation that, you know, no matter where you are in, in life, there's always room to continue to grow. And I think that's something, regardless of where we are, we can all absolutely learn from that. Um, you want to talk to you a little bit about, you know, we talked, we've talked a lot about acting, but, you know, one of New Mexico United's kind of key tenants is combining art and sport. Um, and that's something that isn't necessarily done in a lot of spaces in sport. I think there's these imaginary lines that we as people create, uh, you know, you're either a jock or you're a nerd or, or, or something like that. Um, is, is that something that, that you... Really quick? Please Can do, I address yeah. that really One of my dearest friends in this world is Conrad Goody. Conrad Goody was an All-American at Missouri. He played for the Giants, the Bears, and Tampa Bay. He was an art major at the University of Missouri. And he is, to this day, a wonderful artist. And now he's transitioned into in well he's not transitioned another thing that he does he's a wonderful writer so you know that division if you no know, you want to you want to play full on sports and be physical oh my god which is such a release you know all these little girls who have played my my granddaughter um i think they're 4 maybe 5 now and I've, I've taught each one or tried to how to throw a punch, you know, make sure you lock your wrist, make sure it comes from all the way from the shoulder, you know, and go all the way through it. And I see how liberating it is for a seven year old child to, who is very delicate and sweet but for the first time to really hit something is, is pretty cool. You know, and I'm always putting my hands up. I'm going, hey, 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 go ahead. And, you know, I'm such a jerk. Why am I teaching? But, I, you know, I got to tell you, my youngest daughter, Rebecca, is a frail and also was a great water polo player. But when she was very small playing soccer, she would run down the field when she was six or seven, shading the sun from her eyes as she would go down the field. <laughs> and you know what? I taught that girl how to throw a punch. <laughs> well, thanks, yeah, Mr. Whatever. Banks. I'm, I'm, I'm in perpetual danger of beating, being beat up by seven-year-olds, and now <laughs> all you've done is given them proper technique to do it. So thanks. That's, that's really the, the worst takeaway from this whole thing is okay. you, you've armed more seven-year-olds to beat me up. All right, but Lucas, make sure that they lock that wrist. So, that <laughs> they, so I mean, seriously, I mean, because the seven, you would hate that if the kid threw a punch and they got a, a loose wrist and they break their wrist. You're not, you're not going to want that. Then that's, that's your fault, Lucas. Yeah, yeah, it's it's my fault for being the person I am that I've led to circumstances where a seven year old is beating me up, which is not not at all unlikely. But all right, I, I would point. just like to point out what a hell of a guy I. am that I took me with bamboo shoots under my fingernails to get on to this technical thing, this, this, <laughs> this, this computer, and thank God Juliana came and saved the day. Yeah, she's the, she's the MVP. She's at the absolute MVP. Uh, uh, let me ask you a question. If I just shut this thing, you guys will be gone? Yeah, probably forever. <laughs> All right, it, would kill, well, it would kill us both. Okay, you watch this. I'm ready to go. Anything else you need to say to me? Well, thank we you, love you for hanging out with us. We yeah, we'll see you at the next game. Oh, yeah, you will. What is, so what's the next home game? Uh, that the would 29th. be, uh, yeah, the 29th, next Wednesday. But that's not what's on my card. Yeah, I'm so one of the games too. got moved. You're okay. setting it up purpose for us, Mr. Banks. We had to move it because the isotopes added a game. So for everyone listening and for you, we moved the game that was originally scheduled for the 22nd to the 29th, just one week later. I uh, can come the 29th. Perfect. Sweet. Love Good. it. Because the 22nd, I couldn't. All right. Happy trails. Watch this. And, and good night. In New Mexico.
We know true. True love, true beauty, true adventure, true color, and true culture. Because we are truly hot, truly unique, truly rich, and truly home to the greatest stories and heroes, caverns and mountains, music and dancing, sunrises and sunsets. Home to the artists, the warriors, and the multi-generational, multi-racial, all-inclusive family that we call the United. It's true, the black and yellow, this shield, these people, these scenes. This is New Mexico United, and New Mexico United is New Mexico true. Well, that was fun. Fun, intense, educational. <laughs> That's the greatest dismount from one of our guests we've ever had. <laughs> he just closes the laptop and then we're in a commercial break. Well done, producer Dylan. Dylan's the best, and I do love that he sort of called his shot a little bit. I, I think he may have been goosing his technological uh, lack of proclivity a little bit. I think he knew exactly what would happen if he shut his laptop down, um, but legendary legendary jonathan banks um again you want to see him get your tickets for the game on the 29th this dude does come out there he roams around the field he never he's like misses a totem him. for us man yeah i mean he he's i've seen him out in front of the curse at least three or four times going and saying hello to people he's not lying when he says he loves to go over there and it's great to see i mean he's just a regular dude he's, he's got a lot of wisdom and he's got a lot of knowledge and he's got a lot of experience and he's seen things that all of us would kill to see probably but he's just a regular humble guy and it's it's awesome to see him out there he's he's wonderful and i, and I think the touching part of it like throughout that whole thing yeah yeah he had some hilarious moments laugh out loud moments amazing insight into his life but very similar to the spirit of somos unidos is is everything that's coming out of his mouth right he he may not have been a lifelong New Mexican. He may not have been with this team from day one, but he gets it. And I think that's a message that we're constantly trying to push back out there. Like, look, we don't have key performance indicators for you as a New Mexico United fan. You can come in tomorrow. You can come to the next game and you can be like, I love this team. I love this community and I want to do my part. And you carry all the gold stars that everyone from the beginning has carried. That's right. Yeah, there's no there's no perfect jumping on point. It's whenever the hell you get there, whenever you feel like it. You could have been there since day one, or day one could be tomorrow for you. There's there's no right or wrong answer, and and I think that's a great example of it. Right. And Jonathan Banks, he's he's not a, a lifelong New Mexican, right? But he's coming in, and now he's he's throwing our or he's teaching our seven year olds how to throw perfect punches. Uh, that is, <laughs> there's the you are you are in danger, Mr. Cash. I am going to get beat up by so many children because of that. Like it's got to stop. Well, you I, were I getting already, beat up by children before. Now they yeah. just won't have broken wrists. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Like, no, I, there was a terrible joke to be made in there. But what an amazing conversation. How fun. And and, and again, I don't want to get too soapboxy. And I, I don't want to get too sentimental. But I think Mr. Banks is a perfect example of what happens when you just ask, hey, would you be interested in doing a United game? Because I know like our core population, there are thousands in the black and yellow family that are gonna be there regardless, regardless sure. of whether or not it's a merch launch, regardless of whether or not it's a game, like they're gonna be there. And so many of them are amazing about inviting other people into that experience and saying, you need to be a part of this. This is something else. And we've seen those ripple effects of that happening. And it was just such a reminder of what happens when you just ask, what well, have you seen a United game? Because yeah. it's easy. Someone puts a grumpy comment up on social media, soccer sucks, or you don't deserve a stadium, or blah, 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 blah. But you're like, one thing I learned from Ron Patel early on with the soul is like, I'll make a bet with you. You come and experience this, and if you don't love it at the end of it, fine, it's all on me. And we've, we've won that bet close to 100% of the time.
Yeah, and Robert Romero said in the chat here, Jonathan definitely gets our New Mexico vibe, New Mexico United vibe, and and that's exactly to your point, Lucas. It's that Somos Unidos. It's you know he talks about everything he can do to help kids. He'll do, um, and that that's part of what we do. I mean, a, a big part of what we do is just that community piece, and and Jonathan gets that, and he also has a hell of a time watching the games as well. So, it you know impacting community, caring about each other, and watching soccer kind of hits the trifecta for us. Absolutely. We don't get to play a silly game tonight, and producer Dylan, if you'll go ahead and throw up Cinnamon Cafe's logo for us, I think this is going to be our functioning wrap it up section. Yeah. Um, and again, big love to Cinnamon Cafe. Although I have two more punches left on my burrito card. Two, two more, and I get a free left. one. You you would have gotten one of those punches this morning, Canella. If you're listening to this, I'm not the boss of you at all. Okay, you got to take care of your own staff. You got to understand what's going on. But I heard. I heard through the grapevine from two important individuals in New Mexico United that Monday morning is when they're at their hungriest. So as a public (laughs) service announcement, Cinnamon Cafe is not open on Monday mornings. And if you are banking on that delicious breakfast burrito goodness to get you through your Monday morning. Banksing. Oh, wow. Banksing on it. Dylan, episode title right there. Go ahead and scratch it in your dorky notepad. Dylan or David has seen himself out, which is. is No, Dylan saw me out. Dylan saw me out. I deserve that. I, I think I'm on a yellow now. Yeah, you're on a yellow. Uh, yeah. Very similar to Amando Moreno from the sixth minute forward in the last match, which means you're going to score an absolute banger of a goal here in a little bit. Let's go. <laughs> um, I do want to do a little bit of housekeeping, though, in the sense of we, we're on an unpredictable schedule right now, and we appreciate – I've been watching the numbers over here. So many people just continue to come back and support – and watch these amazing conversations. And I'm almost certain it's because they want to hear from Jonathan Banks and not me and you. But thank God we Absolutely. get to be the vehicle and get those residuals. Thank you so much for supporting us. Please continue to support us. If you already have not done so, please rate, subscribe, review to the podcast, which will come out later. Another thing that's super duper helpful, we saw this the last time. If you'll just share the stream to your personal timeline, we may hit one of your two friends that that like actually think we're entertaining and worth the time. And, and so we appreciate the, the small efforts on that front um, and, and are just glad to be back at it. Dave, we have a crazy couple of weeks ahead of us. So let's kind of set the schedule so that people are not logging in next Monday and expecting to see us. Yeah, so we won't be in next Monday to Lucas's point. Um, and as far as kind of the crazy schedule goes, I think we've got, what is it, six, seven? Well, between now and... Call it 31, 42 days from now, we have nine games. Nine games in 42 days. We have, I think we have five events happening in like a nine day spread. So yeah. we're doing doing the Civic Plaza watch party. That's a great time to plug that. We are yes. watch partying on Saturday for San Antonio. I cannot overstate how important this game is. It is so big. Ooh, we got to win. We would love to have the boys in the lab for this one, but we've got to do our best to like collectively get together and send them energy, you know, a hundred miles away, not a hundred, mm-hmm. many hundreds of miles away. And so we'll do that at civic Plaza watch party. There is no cost whatsoever. Correct. We ask that if it's within your means and it's reasonable for your situation, please make a donation to the Somos Unidos foundation. But even if you don't make a donation, your presence is beyond any dollar amount that we could put on it. So come, yeah, come hang, hang out, out with us. us. There's going to be food. There's going to be merch. There's going to be beer. There's going to be great times with friends. Bring a bring a camping chair. Bring a lawn chair. Sit on the plaza with us and and watch New Mexico United on the biggest screen we we can find anywhere. I think the the biggest most consistent screen we can get a bigger screen, but they're subject to daylight. So this one no, is not point, at yeah. all. It's gorgeous, and we want you out there. It's always a great scene. Um, and then we go into the gauntlet, man. Wednesday. That match, rescheduled match against RGV. For anyone that didn't catch it via our conversation with Mr. Banks, the match that was originally scheduled for the 22nd has now been moved to the 29th. It's still against RGV. It's still a hugely important game. If you look massive. at the standings table yeah. for the Mountain Conference, that's absolutely massive. Then that Saturday, Dave, hold on. Help me out with this. I'm, I'm having a hard time pacing through it. Then we're in Louisville that Saturday. Is that right? Uh, yeah, that's correct. Uh, we'd be on Louisville. I think that's was that the third, I believe, October third. Right, um, that's a Sunday early afternoon game. We're doing going to be a one o'clock civic- Mountain Time game. That yep. one. Doing another um, Civic Plaza watch party for that one. So have that on the books, and yep. then it's a sprint to the end. Wednesday, Saturday, one week off for a road game, then another Wednesday, Saturday. So United fans, if you 
get your adrenaline rush from coming to United Games, the month of October is going to be one of your favorite. So nine games left. Six of them are in division. That's, I mean, that's crucial when we're looking for that. We're fighting for that playoff spot. Six of the final nine games are in division. We play RGB a few times. Uh, we've still got San Antonio uh, twice. Monarchs. We've got San Antonio twice. I mean, these are going to be absolutely crucial matches. Um, and everything is still up for grabs. I mean, we're we're right there in it. It's it's the most crowded division uh, in soccer right now, in, in the USL, rather. It's the most uh, competitive division in the USL. And in my opinion, it's the best division in the USL. And we have everything to fight for. And we need people to be loud. Come on, have a great time, whether that's at Civic Plaza or in the lab. And we're looking forward to it. Dave, I, I if this violates any sort of funds, you just be like, that violates funds and we can't do it. But can you talk about how people can help with the stadium initiative? I know we have yeah. a Facebook group. I know we have a lot of different things going on. I think we as citizens are allowed to speak about it. Yeah, we can absolutely talk about it. I, the biggest thing, um, I think, is obviously make sure you're registered to vote. That's going to be really crucial. And that's regardless of how you feel about any issue or any candidate or anything like that. Make sure you're registered to vote. It's super easy. Go to vote.org. Uh, you can do it right now. You can be done in five minutes. Make sure you're registered to vote. Um, and then election day is November 2nd. Um, and that's going to be at your normal precinct. But prior to that, October 5th is when early voting starts and then expanded early. Vote. So that early voting is just at one location, but the expanded early voting at a lot of the other precincts starts on October 16th. So you have lots of opportunities and lots of time to make sure you go and cast your vote. Again, whether that's for any candidate, against any candidate, for the stadium, against the stadium, exercise your right to vote. It's yours. Um, and, and, and we hope you'll vote yes on the stadium because it's something that really impacts a lot of people in a positive way. Won't raise anybody's taxes. Obviously those are great things. Um, and, and really will improve, improve the community. And that's really why we do it. Um, but regardless of how you vote, we hope you do. Um, you know, I was having a conversation with somebody, a group of people the other day, Lucas, um, and they were talking about, we were talking about the stadium and they were supportive of the stadium project. And they said something to the effect of, we got to make sure we're doing, you know, some community work to make sure that, uh, you know, we get the stadium. And I stopped him and I said, well, we never stopped. Well there's, an, well, there's an important distinction here, right? They said, let's do some community work so we can get the stadium. And I said, you got to remember, the stadium is not the end goal. We're not doing community work so we can get the stadium. We're working to get the stadium so we can continue to do more community work. And that's truly what the most important thing is. You know, New Mexico United is going to be here with or without a stadium. We're going to be able to do a heck of a lot more in the community with the stadium. And ultimately, that needs to be the end goal. Um, it's just the community impact and continuing to, to help make things better in New Mexico and continue to hopefully revitalize downtown and do some really awesome things. That's ultimately what it's all about. It's not about where we play our games. Nope. It's about creating something that we can all be proud of. I've I've been with this this crazy amigo Peter Trevisani from essentially day one, and he has never wavered throughout anything, throughout the successes of 2019, throughout the trials and tribulations of 2020. Peter has never wavered in what the point of everything we do is, and that is making the state a better place. The stadium is a powerful, powerful tool in that fight. And and I hope people see that and I hope they they get that, but I hope they understand that that's not the end goal. We don't we don't stop going to community centers on the weekly once we have a stadium. That's nope. all we're going to do is we're going to bring the community centers to us at the stadium. We don't stop supporting art because we have a stadium. We bring art together. It's all it is, is an elevation and augmentation of those things that we have been about since day one. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more on any of that. All right, Lucas, since we are in the cinnamon sugar and spice cafe, wrap it up segment. Uh, what was your favorite part of today's episode? Um, I just cannot stress like how starstruck I was throughout that whole thing. So for those of you that are like scratching in your notes, Lucas was especially bad tonight, not just his normal level of bad. It, it's a lot to do with that. And I think it's because not only does Mike Airman Trout resonate, I think with a lot of the New Mexican spirit, you know, you mentioned I've grown up in, in this paradigm and, and he speaks so much as that character to what it means to be tough and gritty and mm -hmm. different things like that. But Jonathan Banks, to me, is a hero because, yes, this is a this is a mask he puts on to entertain all of us. And it's amazing. But Jonathan Banks, the individual, is someone who saw from afar and saw from the outside, man, they are really, really doing something special. And I think the big lesson I take out of it is he didn't try and keep it at arm's length. He didn't try and be like, oh, I guess that's kind of cool, but I'll keep it over here. He fully embraced it. 
And he's come to every game, and you heard in his voice how excited he was that that game had gotten moved from the yeah, 20th he was. to the 29th he was. so that he could come and hang out with us. And I'm just like, that's incredible. Here's a guy who's born in the D.C. area, has had all the success in the world, and is just completely sprung on the idea of Somos Unidos. Yeah, for me, I've got, I think I've got two favorite uh, favorite parts of the episode. One was uh, Producer Dylan's transition uh, when, when Jonathan Banks closed his laptop. That's fine work. It's fine uh, work, Bill. It's, it's about as good as it gets from a producing standpoint, I think. Uh, and then number two uh, was was Jonathan saying, essentially, regardless of where you are in life, I, I always want to be better. He says, I'm 74 years old. I want to be a better actor when I'm 75. And, and he's if that such a good actor. Right, right. If he's any better at 75, he'll, he'll be – I mean, I don't know how he gets better. But it's, that's inspiring to think, you know, wherever you are in life, whether you're, you're two or you're four or you're 74 – uh, or you're somewhere in between, you can always fight to be better. You can always fight to learn and you can always, you know, get a book and read about something new or or just listen to somebody who knows something better than you or, or, or just work to improve yourself. And he talks about practicing every single day. An audition is just an opportunity to act more. I mean, that sort of work ethic and care and drive is inspirational. It's It's something else. It's it, it's the stuff, again, I, I made the comment earlier that like I would have never in a million years guessed when I first saw that character hit the screen and I was just absolutely captivated by him that I would get to have such an amazing conversation. Producer Dylan, his favorite part was when Jonathan Bakes talked about Australian New Wave cinema. Dylan, I, 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 don't, know to, I don't even know what to do with you, you obscure, <laughs> wonderful unicorn of a man. Um, hey, look at that. We got a El Salvador flag in the chat. Let's go. Amanda Moreno. How about that goal he scored? I know we talked about it a little bit, but my goodness, that was, uh, let's call it a uh, Mondo Lazo. How about that? I got to talk to his dad afterwards, which yeah. is a, a singular joy is getting to hang out with He's Carlos. But yeah, he was, he was just over the moon. Amando going over and celebrating with them. I'm just yes. like, this, this is what New Mexico United is. Seeing those scenes again, seeing a gritty win seeing oh my gosh it's there's just nothing better than being back in the lab which is why i'll use like my final two seconds to be like just keep packing the lab with us like yeah absolutely we don't know the future we don't know anything right we don't know how the stadium stuff is gonna go we don't know how the season's gonna shake out but we can control our ability to get in there and support the heck out of this team who has just given us so much than the so much more than we could ever expect that's right. That's right. People like Amanda Moreno and Devin Sandoval and Josh Suggs and Sully Muhammad and about 20 other guys uh, on, in that <laughs> locker room who are who are wonderful people. Who are now mad at you that you didn't name them by name. Great job, Dave. I love every single one of them. Um, but yeah, yeah, I agree with you 100%. When our family comes out to the lab, it's, it's the best thing in the world. So looking forward to the next time we're able to do that, which uh, we'll be joined by Mr. Jonathan Banks. And on the 29th, 29th, it's a Wednesday match. Those ones are always tricky, but get out there and let's get rowdy and uh, and uh, let RGV know that probably uh, whatever playoff spots are left, we're, we're definitely taking one of them. Yeah, but until then, Mr. Cash, producer Dylan, somos unidos. We are united. <laughs>